the story about being first in some way. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about what it's like to be first. I mean, is that always best? Um, I found this quote um, from Jimmy Romney, who's the chairman and president and CEO and supreme ruler of IBM. Um, and she was quoted as saying, um, be first and be lonely, which is really interesting coming from someone you know, in her position. And you know, I was thinking about that. I think from my perspective, I think there is some, some truth to that, um, but lonely in the sense of alone or lonely in the sense of not feeling support. Um, for me personally, um, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I'm always starting a company and doing wearing many hats on my own. Um, and then, but you're working so hard, it's like you're swimming underwater, you're swimming and swimming and swimming, and then you know you sort of come up for air, and then you look around and you realize the pool is empty. So it's kind of like that kind of analogy for me. And then once you realize, and you're just treading, going, um, can somebody give me a hand? Oh, no, okay. Well, then you just go back under and carry on. So. Um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, just, I don't know, we'll just start with Claire. You know, you've obviously been a first, I mean, come on, Netscape, that's so awesome. Um, I'm old. <laughs> well, hey, I'm old too, I'm old too. Um, CPM was my first operating system, so there you go. But um, yeah, what do you, I mean, do you think that statement's true? Um, you know, how do you, how do you feel about that? So I, I try to think when, whether I've been lonely, I think there are times when you're lonely, right? Because I've been head of engineering I've had head of engineering roles and in startups, and sometimes you don't feel like you get the support of your peers. Sometimes the, the you know success or failure of the companies get blamed on you because you're the, the you're developing so the products, you know, whether it's working or not. Um, but you know, I uh, I I think I mitigate uh, feeling lonely by staying busy and. Um, um, and I try to make um, working relationships with people uh, and try to build support, right? Part of being a successful manager or engineering leader is also how you can rally your peers. It cannot just be a good manager for you or you know, it cannot just um, be a good um, manager for your boss. You have to build relationships so your team can also be very effective. So I'm actually you know, very much believe in that relationship really helping you build the support and help you build that success, not just for you, but also for your team. So I spend a lot of time really interacting a lot with everybody in the company, not just engineering. So I try to stay busy, I try not to get lonely by building a lot of support around me, but I totally understand sometimes when you're only women, you don't have another person to really run by uh, things. And um, some, you know, I, I sought mentorship uh, outside of the company at times when I did feel lonely. So part of being a leader and being in engineering is about being resilient. You gotta survive this game, right? And you gotta be able to feel good about how you're doing there. So building support around you. It doesn't have to be another woman at times because it's hard to find them. But now you can find them much more readily, right? Um, but it could be, you know, other men who are more empathetic to what you do. Or there are lots of men here, and um, you know, I mean, it's, sometimes it's amazing for me to find, you know, my biggest supporters are coming from um, people, uh, my male peers, and they're, you know, I had one of my uh, male, male peers talk about. How he, he's most admired person that he can name is his wife, and she's a working woman, and she juggles all these things, and you know what she does is amazing. And I knew that he's a big supporter, and he can be a uh, he can be a uh, ally to me. So you know, find you can find those people. So keep keep moving. So Tanya, I mean, as a founder, I mean, what are your thoughts? You know, obviously the life of a founder, mm -hmm. um, and also if you can comment on that as well. So what are your thoughts? Well, I was fortunate to stop to start Top Girl Coder with my sister, and um, we're both really passionate about technology and about our mission. And then, um, as soon as we decided that we wanted to build a platform around it, I identified other engineers within my community that shared the same passion that I did and the same vision to develop a really diverse team and um, and 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 that we're really passionate about um, building a community of women and men as their allies um, to 
to socialize, collaborate, and connect. And so I I don't know if I if I feel lonely very often. I think that when I am alone, I'm, I'm pretty excited to have, <laughs> to have that time to get work done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have a six-year-old. Um, but that said, I, I definitely identify quickly people that could help me and that shared my passion because I wanted to share that with others as well. Yeah, well, yeah so I mean, I think it's great to find community. It's great to find mentors, all of that. Sometimes when you are pioneering something and, and it's maybe something, you know, cutting edge, whatnot, it's hard always to find people that are like minded. Um, but one thing I do to keep off, like, keep from being lonely, I never feel lonely even though I'm alone probably most of the time, um, is uh, I seek uh, people through books, so reading. I mean, you connect with centuries and centuries of advice and viewpoints and whatnot. So I'm a like voracious book reader. <laughs> uh, I, I don't eat the books, but you know. <laughs> but um, yeah. So anyway, uh, so I think that, that like having those pursuits and like I feel inspired by people that are you know have been dead for 200 years and you know those are people I look up to because I might not see somebody in my community that really you know um, inspires me. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a combination of that. Okay, that's really interesting. I'm glad we don't need people. So, um, so, well, Gina, I'm going to come back to you. I mean, you, you're working in, a, you know, in, a, in an environment with a lot of people, and you know, we had a lot of time here, as you said, to talk outside, and we have heard about some of your experiences. So, you know, how do you feel about the concept of loneliness and, you know, and making yourself heard in an environment, even though you are surrounded by people? So, it's funny when you said um, be first to be lonely. I didn't think about being alone. I thought about being alone in what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Like, so um, here you are in this environment, and, and you don't agree with the path that, that's being chosen or um, you know, the way that the thing is being designed or whatever, and it's time to speak up. Um, it's time to like, make your voice heard and make sure that they understand that like, there's a different viewpoint and all of the supporting reasons behind that different viewpoint. And a lot of times, no one's interested in hearing <laughs> that different viewpoint coming from a woman or a person of color or whatever makes you different in that room, it can be that much more challenging. And so you open your mouth and whether people agree with you or not, you will usually feel quite alone. Um, and quite alone and oftentimes unheard. And um, I don't know, it's just been my experience that feeling really confident in what it is that you're saying, like I had this opinion and I needed to articulate this opinion for a reason, and pushing forward in an environment where like, you're not necessarily going to be given the same courtesy or just common respect um, that they may be given the other peers at the table um, and not letting that deter you, um, which can be unbelievably frustrating, certainly the first time you run into it because you know, no one told you uh, that when you were invited into that meeting, people just wanted you there, not speaking, um, and, and recognizing that I have something to say, I have something to contribute, and I was invited here for that reason, so let me actually do that contribution because I'm not serving anybody 